Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for joining me today. I'm Hashem and uh, yeah, thanks for joining on another Contact Sheets live stream. This is under the sub-series I call Street Process, where I share the photos from a single roll of film and just go through them and talk about what I was thinking when I took the photos, what worked well, what didn't work, what mistakes did I make, what could be done better next time. And hopefully some of that can inform your photographic process and help you kind of uh, think about what uh, you might do in a similar situation. So today's roll of film is a roll of Fujifilm Provia 100F shot in the Leica MA on the streets of Melbourne. And it's not a film that I shoot often. I don't often shoot slide film on the street because uh, of a few reasons. And one of the main reasons is that it's quite expensive both to buy it and to process it. Secondly, the performance of slide film, if you've ever shot it, is a little bit more limited than negative film. There's a lot less dynamic range, it's harder to get a good exposure, there's less flexibility when out there on the streets to make mistakes. But when you do get it right, when you do nail a shot and you get a good exposure, the results are beautiful. The colors are something unique, the, the very fine grain of slide film, the unique blocky look of that limited dynamic range when you get uh, high contrast scenes, for example, which I shot a lot of, a lot of, sorry, can be quite nice. So yeah, thanks if you're watching here live or if you're watching this later. If you are here live, feel free to drop a comment in the live chat. I've got a few people here already. Um, some of the regular names I'm seeing, thanks for joining. Uh, let's see if that's working, showing on the screen. Cool, Michaela, thanks for joining. We've got Winsome and Devin Holt. Also, Nathan just dropped a comment. Hope you're well, man, watching from the UK tonight. Awesome, well, lucky that I caught you before you went to sleep, it's probably pretty late there. So let's have a look at some of the, the photos I'm gonna be going through today. And as you can see, just looking at the grid, the look of slide film is unique. You do get those dark shadows, those nice uh, poppy colors. It has vibrant saturated colors most often, even something like Provia. And then you can go with something like Velvia, which is even more saturated. But looking at the first shot, now I'm shooting out on the streets of Melbourne during uh, our summer here. So even though I've labeled this video as uh, January, 2022, I probably did start this role very late December 2021, but then I probably shot the majority of the role uh, in the early days of this month of January. And as you can see, I was talking about the colors being quite saturated and the contrast being quite hard. Uh, looking at that red in the background and with this shot, obviously I was just trying to frame this businessman walking past creating that subframe behind him with the red and then this lady here with the trolleys and all the shopping presumably or something uh, in this scene at Melbourne's GPO building, which if you live here, you'd be very familiar with. So yeah, if you're here live, feel free to ask any questions. Let me know your experience with shooting slide film, uh, your general thoughts on street photography. Let me know if you enjoy these kind of videos because I enjoy making them and I've done a few already in the past under the same uh, like playlist called Contact Sheets Street Process. And I've uh, got a few more people jumping on. Hello, thanks for joining. Hey, John from over in Japan. And fluke, awesome. Yeah, so a lot of you might be wondering, well, what about metering when it comes to slide film? I'm using the Leica MA in this situation, which is a camera that doesn't have a light meter. And because I've gotten so used to having shot the M4 for years and then this camera and not using a meter on the street, I tend to uh, generally not use a meter. With slide film, I actually will bring one with me a handheld light meter and pull it out every now and then just to get a, a reading to see how close I am with my guesses. But with scenes like this, when I'm metering for the full sunlight, I'm basically using Sunny 16 because this is a slightly easier scene to meter. Uh, the person, the subjects I'm going for are in complete sunlight. So if I was at 125th, I could use F16 or F13 or something like that and so on 250th, uh, F11, whatever. And that's how I'm generally working when it's in fast paced situations. Now, if it's something difficult and I have time, I might pull out a meter, but when you're on the street, you generally don't have time. And even if I had a built-in meter in the camera, I don't even have time to look at what it thinks I should be using, to be honest. Um, but yeah, what I'm looking for on the streets is generally a few different elements, a few different maybe people, characters, lights, and uh, you know shapes being created by light and shadow whatever that might be. And as you can see, people are dressed very vibrantly this summer, something I'm noticing more of compared to previous years. And uh, letting the shadows go dark on slide film will create a really interesting 
look sometimes because you get very little detail exposed into those shadows and you get kind of this like hard contrast look which is what i noticed in this scene with the lady waiting by the tram stop and all the the vertical elements from the you know the tram stop and the poles and the shape of that shadow almost dividing her face in half so uh, that's what i was going for there i didn't quite get the verticals right i took a second shot trying to get the alignment a little bit better but to be honest looking back at these two shots i don't think either of them works i don't know if i was pre-visualizing something else altogether and it just didn't work but uh in my opinion i probably wouldn't have taken this shot but it's all good practice either way and this is why you know i, I take the photo and then assess it later and try not to think too much when i'm then and there and um, try not to be too afraid to waste film uh, yeah, so I'm still around the GPO building. As you can see, you've got to be really careful with exposure. Uh, and when people are backlit, it tends to mean that the front side of them, as you can see kind of here, is in shadow or it's starting to be in shadow. And slide film will not really render much detail and color depth in those bits that even slightly fall into shadow. And then let alone this completely black area in the background there. So what I um, was reminded of when shooting this role was an important lesson that with slide film, you have to factor in the limited dynamic range and try and shoot in situations where the light is front or side lighting the subjects and then just letting um, those shadows go dark. Try and meter for the highlights because the, the highlights, as you can see here, they'll blow out very easily. And I probably metered a little bit too bright by only, you know, half or one stop here. On the other hand here, the metering was quite good. I was metering for the highlights and the subject is front to side lit, as you can see from the, the way the shadow falls here. And then the most important part of the image, which is in the highlights, gets exposed really well and the shadows go dark and your eyes don't really care too much for that because the, the main subject is well exposed. And this is kind of what you want to aim for when shooting slide. It probably is a tad overexposed uh, you can see some of those really bright highlights losing some detail, but you know, not too much. I think this is a good exposure and it's what I try and aim for when uh, using slide film. And again here, when it's front lit or side lit or a combination of both, you can create good strong exposures even in high contrast scenes. It just means you're going to let the shadows go dark. So I hope all the, that exposure rambling makes some sense to you. And let's just keep going through some shots and talk a little bit more about the approach and some of these scenes. What I was looking for here was a bunch of uh, the, the nice colors that I noticed from even things as trivial as the dumpster here and the, the jackets that these kids were wearing and then um, you know this person in the foreground. However, my timing wasn't great. His shadow was falling back onto these kids with the bright colors and then therefore like mentioned, not having those colors exposed nice and brightly because they didn't fall in the highlights. And it's not interesting enough to have been a strong image, I think, if there was a little bit more happening, a little bit more filling in some of those um, negative spaces, maybe it would have worked. And I don't think this guy in the background adds too much. But at the time, it was, again, worth taking the shot and, and engaging in that sense of practice. I'm just going to catch up on a few of the comments. And as you can see here, this scene here was completely uh blurred i don't know what happened i used i misfocused perhaps and motion blurred uh it's a 100 speed film so it's not the easiest once again and to be honest i don't think it was a strong scene anyway thanks for joining um dave there is a like button by the way thanks and john for Provy on the street i use my in-camera spot meter I focus on the main subject like a face and let the shadows fall where they may exactly right that's a good way to put it that's advice i heard uh, you know being repeated over and over again by people like steve mccurry and whoever might have used slide film uh, you know in a frequent way which was very common in the past decades um will it not work shooting backlit it will work i just don't think it uh you'd have to expose for the highlights and create a silhouette that would work if you're shooting backlit and you're doing silhouettes, which if you're looking at images, uh, I'll, I'll show you some more later. I think I have some examples of backlit images that didn't quite work. And then um, we can talk about where it, where it could work. And Dave, <laughs> president of something. Thank you. Um, all right. 
moving through the photos. Got my um, iced coffee here, by the way. It's, it's quite hot here in Melbourne. That's why I'm doing this stream in the morning before it gets too hot. And um, it gets too uncomfortable behind the computer screen because I don't have air conditioning here. And again, I don't know if this shot worked or it even could have worked. I think I was taken by the gesture, the sudden gesture of the kid putting his hands over his head and the strong sunlight. But just the placement of the subjects here I don't think worked. If he was off to the left filling in this negative space and there was a better distribution of these three people, that might have worked because there was that nice bit of red here and the blocks of color um, in this area. And I think I was shooting with my friend Josh at this time and we kind of camped in this corner for a little bit because the light was so beautiful. And there was almost a double light effect because of some light reflecting off some distant buildings there. And then I moved off to the other side of this same corner. So as you can see, I just uh, went and stood near this jewelry store window and had observed this person approaching down the street and they had this great hat, which really played into that feeling of uh, the kind of day it was, which was really hot summer day during this heat stroke we've been having 30 plus degrees. And then the fact that this metal surface had this kind of almost like um, like a heat grill or something with the rust adding to that feeling of, um, you know, hot, worn out, um, desert like feelings almost. And I think it worked well for this image. This is one of my favorites from the role. And I like how the background of the lady is in shadow and it creates a really nice backdrop with both the dark shadows, the green working against the red. And then the placement was pretty good. I would have liked if I hadn't included some this area on the left here and cut these poles off and maybe uh, pointed the camera a little bit more to the right. But uh, it was good enough and I was happy with it overall and the exposure was pretty spot on for slide film. And this is, I think, what makes it worthwhile to actually spend the money and shoot slide um, if any of you have ever been hesitant about it because when you do nail a shot, it is worth it. Now looking at other shots that didn't quite work out too well but they were fun to shoot because I had scenes like this where there was a lot going on, a lot of people, a lot of interesting characters, good light. Um, it was just almost too much in this situation and when you're then and there, you almost don't really uh, think about how will this little tram in the background play as a distraction or these people there will they how how in focus will they be when you're shooting film you don't know and um it's it's a lot to juggle but i did shoot a few exposures at this scene and i don't know if any of them see here i think i tried to change my composition to cut out some of those distracting elements um and there was this little huddle happening from this group of um you know there were uh, dancers they were practicing dance moves and choreography out on the the front of Fed Square here. And uh, it was an interesting sort of uh, collection of people and the family here having a chat. So this one's okay, I don't mind it. Uh, but again, there's a lot still happening in the background that doesn't add to the image. And I think I was just too focused on the fact that the light was good and that there were a few interesting characters. So I've got a few exposures there. I don't think any of them works too well. And this is where I think someone was mentioning about shooting backlit. It can work if you let those shadows go dark and you almost have a silhouette effect on the person here who is backlit and um, it's a kind of side backlit, which which is okay. But I'm sure I might have a better example later. Um, see, this is the front lit example from the same scene. I just moved a little bit further down Fed Square and you can see it's a very different look. And generally speaking, this is gonna give you an easier time when the light is coming from the front or side. When it's from the back, slash side not as easy to create a lot of strong color in the scene unless you just want that silhouette effect again here motion blur miss focus bad shot don't know what happened um it's getting dark here i took this because it was really nice and golden at the time and there was a lot of vibrancy in the colors but this is where you can see that limited dynamic range of slide film not really playing any favors and the fact that it's a 100 speed film meant I was um, only able to use f2.8 or f4 and it just didn't really pop as it did in real life. So sometimes you have the opposite effect where the, the, the reality of the scene looked nicer and more vibrant, but you can see it's a little bit underexposed except for maybe these mid tones, but it's not enough to carry the image. And Dave is asking in the live chat, is it too funky to use a fill? Uh, sorry, a flash to fill in the dark to some degree. No, I think a lot of people do that with some success. And I did actually use a flash on this image, coincidentally. Uh, as you can see here, 
this is indoors. And I happen to have the flash with me because I think I had been um, doing some other photography at night or maybe just knew that I would be having some some night scenes. And I just thought the the front page of this newspaper was interesting, but I would not have been able to make this exposure without the flash. This is inside of a 7-Eleven and I was waiting in line, buying a drink or something. And I just thought, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, there's this headline on the newspaper that says, where for a greater 2022. And it's sort of like there's a lot of uncertainty late, lately. And then I thought this would be an interesting shot to look back at sometime down the track. And it just kind of plays into the current, um, you know, zeitgeist of things and, and thought process about the years we've been having. Uh, compositionally and in terms of a photo, it's nothing special. This is purely just a, a documentation of this moment. Um, same here, actually, I used the flash and this is, uh, I was probably heading home and there was this interesting scene just walking past trying to, you know, get to my train. And I just thought the way this lady was leaning her leg on the, the railing inside the train was interesting. But then looking at the shot afterwards, it wasn't probably worth taking and it was nothing special. But you can see that using the flash will even out some of that contrast and help you fill in the shadows. Here was a night scene when I arrived at the train station, I think that I was headed to. So it's a lot darker and I used the camera leaning on some kind of structure to take a longish exposure. I didn't actually use a light meter for this. I just sort of let, I used bulb mode and held the shutter down for about a second or two wide open. And from previous experience, I know that that will generally work out to create a decent exposure. Uh, but, you know, being slide film, you can see there's almost no detail in the shadows, but uh, it does work when you want the attention to go to the area with the highlights being the, the not a bus stop, but, you know, the little stop at the train station. Um, oh, thanks, Fluke, for the, <laughs> I think you were talking about one of the previous images. Um, and John, I think shooting probably is all about embracing the natural yet rich color while still working with the contrast. If you don't want contrast images, use it in a balanced, cloudy. Yeah, you can do that. I just find that Provia ends up looking just a little bit ordinary in cloudy conditions, unless you have some really nice uh, color and, and light and subjects within that situation. Uh, or maybe you're doing some portraits. And what's it like pushing one stop? Um, this pushing slide's not a good idea at all. I haven't pushed Provia, but I've done that with Ektachrome. I pushed it one stop and it, it's great. A lot of people did that on a regular basis just to get a little bit more uh, speed out of it. You do maybe lose a touch more shadow detail but it can rescue the image uh, or the ability to use the film if you couldn't otherwise because it was too slow. So yeah, you can push slide film. You can do it easily. A lot of people did it. They might have pushed a half or quarter stop on a regular basis and it can give an interesting color shift as well. <clears throat> Dave, I like the night shot. Yeah, uh, if you've never shot slide film at night, it's beautiful. It's really great. It turns fluorescent lights from a really bad looking green color to a quite a nice looking like blue green which I quite enjoy. Uh, whether it's Ektachrome, Provia, any slide film has a very unique rendering of artificial lights in my finding. And if you look at a photographer who I talked about recently in um, one of my book sharing live streams, which was Greg Gerard, you'll see that he shot a lot of slide film at night and it looks fantastic. So if you're familiar with his work, you can get great examples of that. Um, so yeah, it looks like a lot of people do like this photo. And yeah, I love shooting slide film at night. If I had the tripod, maybe I would have done some more and created some different compositions. But anyway, let's move through the roll and um, look at some more images. I've probably headed back to the city now to, to shoot some more. And I think I was meeting a friend for lunch and I took the, just, you know, these ladies um, against this window looking out. And I thought just the figures and the shapes they created worked well, but I don't think the lighting um, helped the situation because it has that muddy look that we talked about when, when a subject is backlit and it doesn't um, bring enough life to the colors. This composition worked a little bit better, but I don't think there's enough happening in the scene to have really carried it once again. Um, this, on the other hand, was another one of my favorite shots. And you can see a common theme with the, um, the previous shot that I liked. Not only the fact that the character was wearing a hat, which was purely a coincidence. I think I do obviously have an interest when I see someone wearing an interesting hat or outfit, but the fact that the, um, let's bring them side by side actually. When you have a main subject that falls under the light and then whatever's behind them is in shadow, you get a great 
contrast and backdrop for that subject. And if you ever see this in a situation on the street, it is always worth trying to make an exposure because it looks even better on film when you actually uh, take the shot, considering you've exposed for those highlights. So you can see behind her, it's in shadow. It creates that really stark look and makes the subject pop out of the image. Same thing with the person here sitting on the, the curb with the suitcase. The fact that they're both wearing hats is a coincidence, but you can see that, that he's in the highlights and what's behind him is in shadows and that works really well. So look out for that and take advantage of that if you ever see it. Um, just catching up on some comments. How do you like the purple film? Uh, this is a comment to Scott. Um, Colin, I love this. What about reciprocity failure? Yeah, you do need to take that into consideration as well. Um, there is always information for reciprocity on on most slide films. Haven't tried it at night. You should definitely try it, John. It's great. Um, E100 at night punches the colors up nicely. Yeah, E100 at night is fantastic. Aqua CT, tried it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to save it for something, that's understandable. Aqua CT is pretty much Fuji Provia anyway, as far as I know. Reds of CT Precisor are insane. Yeah, so I think it was just the um, the end rolls of of Fuji Provia from what I was told by a Fuji rep when I worked at the camera store. Um, and it even has the same markings on it. The punch on these images is so nice. Yeah, so this is why I like shooting slide. This would not have looked the same on negative. Sure, it might have looked just as good, but it would have looked a bit different. The way the shadows render, the tonality of that uh, transition from shadow to highlight is a lot more hard. And um, it's almost reminiscent of some of those old uh, Kodachrome street photography images that you might be familiar with if you're a fan of any of the major photographers from the mid-century onwards who shot a lot of Kodachrome, like Alex Webb, like Joel Meyerowitz, like Harry Gruyere, and all these guys. Um, which is something that I'm a big fan of in terms of the aesthetic. And yeah, uh, there's this composition here of this person. Why they're sitting there with what looks like almost a sombrero and a suitcase it really gave me kind of like a feeling of like, this is from another country, from some South American country. Um, it was just a perfect uh, serendipitous moment for me. The fact that they had a suitcase and they're wearing this hat and it's hot. So I made a second exposure from a lot closer. And to be honest, I don't know which one I like more. I'm leaning towards the first one because it has more of a sense of scale and context. But I really like the shapes and the mood of the second one that's a bit closer. And the fact that you can pay more attention to the suitcase and it tells a little bit more of a story in that way. Uh, that like they could be a traveler who's just arrived, who's about to leave somewhere. And uh, the, the, you know, plenty of negative space all really worked well. So I was kind of lucky with this scene and uh, maybe could have made more exposures, but I didn't. But they wouldn't have been any different, to be honest. I couldn't have made too many other angles because again, this is the, the front slash side lit composition. The reverse angle wouldn't have worked maybe as well. Um, and I wouldn't want to shoot straight into his sort of facing because it would have taken away the candid nature of the scene. The sombrero just pops. Yeah, so you think the first one works better? Yeah, so I, I kind of lean towards that, but I still do like the second one as well. Uh, these scenes here, underexposed, I'm um, noticing a, a cool window display here, which was like a Dolce & Gabbana store, and there was this cool light hitting it. In reality, it wasn't actually this dark. There was some nice highlights being created and reflections on the window, but they were too far off in exposure from what I was metering for, which was the highlights, meaning that, again, you get that muddy result and um, the scene itself wasn't that strong. Maybe it would have been if the exposure was better. But again, slide films dynamic range is really tricky in a, in a situation like this. You need the subjects to be in the, the light. Um, this one was just a guy crossing the road with the rolled up rug. I don't know, this is one of those easy shots that you would just naturally tend to want to go for as a street photographer. But in hindsight, it was like too easy of a shot and it was nothing really too special. Um, but, you know, I took it anyway. And again, it is somewhat backlit, which doesn't help it in terms of the color. Uh, his shirt and the front parts of the subjects are all quite muddy. And um, this scene here, this kid just sort of ran in front of me and um, he was just playing and I just instantly reacted and zone focused and took the shot. But I think my shutter speed was too slow, so it didn't really work. 
Um, so agreeing that the first one works leaves more for the viewer to interpret. Yeah, cool. Yeah, those were the sort of questions that popped up in, in my head at the time as well. Uh, Techno. Ectrum has no reciprocity to a certain point, 10 seconds, yep. Steven, thoughts about home scanning slide? I struggle a little bit with it. It takes, a, you'd think it would be a lot easier and it is fairly easy to get a decent scan, so to speak. But then sometimes it's not as good as scans like these, which were actually done by the lab. These were done on a Naritsu. For anyone who's wondering, these were done by Halide Supply and scanned on the Naritsu HS 1800 at a really high resolution. So 6,000 pixels on the long end. And, uh, you know, going into an image like this, if we zoom in, you can see it's pretty high res. There's a lot of detail. Um, it's still loading up there, but you can see it's nice and sharp and there's a lot of um, information there, given what the slide presented. Um, yeah, so uh, scanning slides is something I might do a video on in the future. I'm trying to refine the process to see if there's any workflow tips that help give good colors because sometimes the film base gives a weird red and, and it's hard to get rid of. Even with Naritsu scans, to be honest, like um, you get some weird red cast in the shadows sometimes, which I think I did correct for a lot of these images. I put a universal preset, which just does a slight adjustment to the red curve to bring it out of the shadows um, to look more like the actual slide. Um, this one... Funny scene, kid being dragged in a trailer. I just thought it was cool. And, you know, the uh, juxtaposition of different characters, the older gentleman there, the reds, the yellows. It works okay, but again, nothing too special. Um, here again, you can see another great example of where the exposure being backlit doesn't work too well. It's okay because the light is still coming somewhat from the side, but I'm not a fan of these types of exposures on slide because they can look muddy unless you just lean into the silhouette look and go for that, which I wasn't, not, you know, I was neither here nor there, so it doesn't work too well. Oh, that's some good iced coffee. Um, this, on the other hand, same scene, same kids that you can see here, these school kids in the background, but look at the difference when you just take the reverse angle and with the light on your side, uh, front lighting the subject, the slide film is given the opportunity to really sing, to pop, and to allow those colors to come to life. So that's the, the problem, you know, um, with shooting backlit. And you can see here what I was doing is trying to sort of create a, kind of a juxtaposition again of these stars, these shapes of like the sky and the Christmas decorations and the tram thingies. I don't actually know what they are, power lines or whatever. And um, the... The school kids with their hats and the colors and the just yeah just the merging of all these features i like the old buildings as well it's not a great shot but i think it was what i was intending to to capture at the time and it worked well in terms of exposure as well uh this one here is actually in the same uh, part of gpo as before so i don't know if these images are out of order now that i see that and notice that the first shot was from this scene I think maybe they, some of them are. This can happen sometimes. They get a little bit mixed around. Um, but yeah, it's the same scene, really. I just captured a different um, set of subjects and f using uh, a vertical orientation this time, which I don't often do on the street, but sometimes I do if it works well for the image, like in this situation here where you have these tall buildings with the light reflecting them off them in the background. Sorry, reflecting off them in the background. And then uh, a bunch of different characters entering the scene. Once again, limited dynamic range of slide film means that these people who are in shadow ordering off this menu, which at the time looked a little bit more bright and vibrant and interesting, they did have a bit of light falling on them, but the latitude of the film doesn't allow that to really show up. And um, I really liked the scene at the time and the fact that people were walking through the light here, creating a mixture of different elements. And I created a couple of exposures, but if only there was another pop of light hitting these people in the foreground, maybe that would have worked. Maybe, but yeah, who knows? Um, and once again here, this was a portrait, which I actually asked the guy if I could take. I just liked the way, uh, you know, he looked standing in this light, his outfit. He was obviously quite a fashionable dude. And I said, hey man, like, you mind if I take a photo? Um, cool outfit. And he's like, yeah, sure. And then he's like, can you take one on my phone as well? Uh, absolutely. So I, you know, took one on the phone and I took one on my camera and uh, I didn't meet her which would have been good if I did. I mean, I think the metering for the highlights was good, but the fact that he's he doesn't have enough light on him 
it's very side lit and there's just not enough a light coming on from the front especially considering that he's wearing dark clothes and has dark skin and that there's a lot of dark areas here and shadow on this like uh, orange thing so this would have been a photo that would have worked better on negative film or if i had gotten him to rotate a little bit towards the light and if i moved off to the side um but yeah uh what can i do so an example of a you know a candid portrait so to speak where the light is hitting a little bit more directly it works quite well and um, the fact that there's a lot of shadow behind the subject isn't a problem as long as there's enough light on them on the contrary sorry um, on the other hand this one doesn't work as well um, but yeah conversely it does work when you have light and I do like the fact that you know there's a bit of a sombrero theme here um, just on the guy's hoodie you know, like you got this Mexican themed hoodie and the fact that he's in this strong, harsh light that I shot that previous subject earlier. I don't know if my mind was starting to pick up on these common threads maybe and the fact that he's got a cigarette in a very Clint Eastwood kind of, you know, fashion in his mouth here <laughs> and just walking through this scene where I kind of set myself up, allowed him to walk through and just captured it. Nothing great, but it, it was um, a decent shot. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's all the photos from the role. Um, let me know what you think. Did this encourage you to maybe try out shooting some slide film on the street? I hope so. And uh, did you maybe pick up on any of the mistakes I made as things that you can learn from when you go out and shoot on the street or otherwise? And I'm just looking through some of the, the chats that I missed. I won't read them all out, but I'm just going to breeze through. Um, scanning slide film with the dust issue, yeah. I don't really struggle too much with my home scanning process and dust. I know a lot of people avoid home scanning or DSLR scanning purely because they don't want to deal with dust. But to be honest, my workflow and the way I try and keep them clean and, and the area and use the, the blower and maybe it's just with my home development, the fact that I scan soon after developing and keep it all covered in plastic if I can. Um, I don't struggle too much. Maybe I have like two or three spots sometimes with an average frame or none at all with most frames really um to clone out um flatbeds can work well for slide film that is one of their strengths but with 35 mil they didn't really do a great job either i found that camera uh, gave a better result use prime film xas that would be good for slides um it's just slow you have to do one frame at a time i wish it was um sorry the xas no that you can do a whole roll if it's uncut yep cool cool um so you like the one with the stars uh, the portrait looks nice underexposed exactly right and i kind of wish it wasn't but then again i don't know if my composition was great for this one anyway maybe i could have come closer admire sense adventure using the ma probably use g2 with solid meter yeah i mean but that's the thing my style of shooting the way I'm, i shoot when i'm out there on the street i would probably lose the majority of these moments if i was to sit there and even take the half to one second to um, look at the meter and then adjust my settings. The way I shoot is I see a scene, except with something like the portrait, but generally speaking, I see a scene almost just as I'm walking up to it. And as I'm walking up or getting ready to shoot the scene, I've already metered beforehand. So whenever I'm walking around, I'm constantly adjusting my meter for the light that I'm in and the scene that I'm photographing in. So all I really need to do is raise a camera to my eye, zone focus and shoot. Otherwise, the moment would be oftentimes lost. If it's a slower situation like this, I probably would have had the time to, to look at the meter. Um, but more often than not, I see something approaching. I pre-meter, almost pre-zone focus, set myself up, take the shot. So my style of photography wouldn't really benefit too much from a light meter anyway, to be honest. Um, maybe a little bit, but not much. So that's um, my, my take on that. Um, low key lighting on the portrait, the man leaning on orange looks good. Yeah, it, it's just, yeah, there's not enough light. I think that's, um, you know, I can't even tell if he's looking at the camera or if he, I got him blinking because it's that dark. So that, that's the only problem with that. Slide film is quite unforgiving in that sense. So um, yeah, as Dave Nelson is saying, it loves lots of light, lots of shot um, straight on. Yeah, cool. So yeah, who knows how long Provia will still be around. At the rate Fujifilm is discontinuing its stocks, 
uh, take advantage of it. If you can still buy it, I know it's 20 plus dollars a roll, but you know what? Portra is almost that much now. And if you can get the opportunity to shoot slide filming and if you've never done it before, do it while you can. Who knows how long Fuji will keep making Provia and Velvia and for that matter, how long Kodak will keep doing Ektachrome. So uh, yeah, use it. It's, it's a great thing and it's like great that we have it available. We live in a time where we can shoot slide film the same films that some of the great photographers were shooting decades ago and uh, gives a really unique look. So I hope that this encourages you to try slide film if you haven't. Um, but yeah, sorry, the dust thing. Um, it is an annoyance dealing with dust. Uh, yeah, try some slide film, people. Chicago. Yeah, that looks amazing to shoot in, in Chicago. Um, but yeah, that's right. The prime film does let you use the, the whole role. And I think my friend Cooper, who's done a good review on that scanner still uses it to this day and he quite loves it. I think it's a good option and it's on BNH for like five, 600 us dollars. It's a pretty good deal. Um, reminds me of perfume ad. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, Conic RF meters for me. Yeah. If you use aperture priority, you can, you can do that. But then again, with a difficult scene like this one, you would not be able to trust the automatic metering because it would end up overexposing. It would see all this darkness and overexpose it, giving an even worse result, to be honest. That's why I like metering manually. Even sometimes when I use a digital camera, uh, when I know I'm trying to get the highlights, um, I would meter manually. But then yeah, the slide film can make it even harder. Learning, it's all about experimenting, win some, lose some, yep. Exactly right. Shoot it while you can. So that's causing you to hold off on getting back into medium format. Yeah. Yeah. I think I still have about four rolls of Provia in 120 and I'm just not finding the right subject to use them on. I remember buying a five pack last time I was in Japan and at the time it cost about 45,000 yen, 45,000, the equivalent of about 50, 55 Australian dollars at the time which was great. Now it's a lot more expensive, but I need to find some use for that medium format Probia. It's not as versatile as 35 mil, which I would use on the street. What is the story with Fuji killing so much film stock? I think they just want to get out of the film game. There's no profit in, in it for them at all. It probably costs them a lot to keep making film and not really make much money off it because they make their money through um, industrial equipment and digital cameras and Instax and stuff like that. And uh, TW, in the US, the Prime Film ships with Silverfast. It's a great deal at that price. Yeah, absolutely great deal. And if you're someone who doesn't already have a digital camera, I wouldn't really advise you to get into digital camera scanning and investing in an entire digital or mirrorless camera and then the lens and then the film holder and then the light and the stand potentially or tripod. Um, it's really more for people who already have a lot of that equipment, mainly being camera lens slash tripod, whatever because then the investment is not as much. But if you mainly just shoot film, I would say just um, don't buy a digital camera unless you're going to really make a lot of use out of it. If it's just for the purpose of scanning, get your scans done at the lab. Just pay for the scans, they're good and um, saves you the time and the trouble. Or buy a dedicated film scanner if you really wanna have control and do it yourself. Something like the Prime Film is great for 35 mil uh, or even just get a flatbed for 120 film. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. It's been a while since I did a contact sheets video. Uh, I am looking forward to doing more. Check back on the channel if you wanna see some of the previous videos in this series. If you uh, watch my last actual upload to the channel, it was the video where I was shooting some Ilford HP5 in the Leica MA. If you haven't seen it, um, you probably won't see it if you're watching live, but if you're watching this video after the stream, I'll put a little thingy here for that video. If you want to watch that, maybe I'll put some buttons and end screen cards up for you to check out um, videos like that one, or you can just go back on the channel if you want and check it out. I actually did a point of view video shooting uh, on the street. So you can get a little bit more of an idea of my process when I'm out there on the street, how I shoot, how I try and find scenes. I gave a bit of a narration, but yeah, thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to uh, putting out another video on the channel soon. I've actually not been making many videos because I've been out shooting a lot. The weather's been great and we're not in lockdown. So yeah, I've been out making photos and working towards um, a series as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you're all having a great day or night and I'll catch you in the next one.
Uh, take care. Thank you. And see you soon.